Today on Green Science Oregon, we're taking you to Portland State University, where you'll meet three professors who are collaborating on a unique research project to study the effects of combining green roofs with solar arrays. We'll talk to the city of Portland's eco-roof expert, Tom Lipton, who will explain why green roofs are an important part of stormwater management. We'll also visit ZGF Architects, where sustainable designer Craig Briscoe talks about energy efficiency at their new home in downtown Portland, the High Performance 12 West Building. And we'll take you on a tour of Solar World in Hillsboro, where hundreds of thousands of solar cells are produced every day. All coming up next on Green Science, Oregon. If you have a, uh, a rooftop and you'd like to do something green with it, uh, one of the options is to put on a green roof. A green roof will uh, absorb excess water, it'll grow material and provide great insulation on, on your house. Uh, another thing, of course, you might do is put solar panels on your roof. And people usually think of an either or option, but in fact, uh, we think you can do both. If you consider most urban cities have large flat expanses of rooftop that are basically unused and if you really want to push towards a sustainable landscape you know we might want to find ways to, to utilize that flat space and so we can use it for, for growing plants in a green roof capacity. Uh, likewise we might want to utilize that flat space to, to install photovoltaics and the question is how do you best bring those two technologies together because if you could do both um, then you're not having to compete one green technology against the other. Here at Portland State University, we're uh, conducting a fairly novel experiment trying to couple green roof technology with photovoltaics um, to really ask questions about how these two te green technologies work together. What a green roof is supposed to do is insulate the building. So in a hot summer day, it would provide insulation, keep it cool. On a cold winter day, it actually provides insulation helps to keep the heat in. If you go up on a green roof in Portland uh, in the heat of the summer, you'll find that the vegetation that's near parapets or, or mechanical equipment that's in the shading, partially shaded, tends to do much better and has much better biodiversity. Here at Portland State, on top of Science Building 2, we're installing a very basic uh, test facility, which is basically, you can think of as large planter boxes. They're about 12 by 15 feet, they're stainless steel, they're watertight. Um, and they are planted as a traditional green roof. And so there's a long history of how you would plant a green roof, and we're actually developing this as sort of a, a standard Portland model. The back half of each pan will have uh, solar arrays over the back. So the front of the pan will be open just like a normal green roof. The back of the pan will be underneath the solar arrays, so they'll be shaded. Each pan has 475 watt panels. And so we have a total of 16 of those. The grand total would be uh, 2.8 kilowatts of solar power that we could generate from all of the solar panels. Uh, that amount is a pretty good amount for a typical residential home, for example. Uh, if you had 2.8 kilowatts on your rooftop, you could generate most of your electricity needs most of the time. And so what we're hoping to do is to explore the potential benefits that photovoltaic panels can provide for the vegetation by providing that partial shading. So we'll be collecting power, we'll be monitoring the energy we generate from the solar panels, and then uh, we'll be monitoring the various functions of the green roof. We're going to have the ability to um, sort of change the experimental conditions of the different plots to see what impact it has on the photovoltaics and energy production. So we'll be changing, uh, for example, water consumption and usage. So plants um, are really important you know, in the environment because they move large amounts of water to the atmosphere. And what we want to know is if we change the composition of green roof plants, can we enhance the water moving through the system? And does it have any effect on the performance of the photovoltaic panel? I'm Craig Briscoe. I'm a, what we call an integrated designer at CGF. I work on the sustainable design team. CGF is, a, is an architecture firm, uh, actually architecture, interiors, and planning uh, firm, uh, or a large national firm, sort of the smallest big firm in the United States is how I like to say it. The building we're sitting in, 12 West, uh, is uh, a major project for ZGF. 
um, in that it's our new home in Portland. Portland is uh, where the firm was founded and it's still where sort of the headquarters is. There's this sort of unique partnership between uh, ZGF and Girding Edeland Development, who was the developer on the project, to, uh, to transform this, this basically bare half block uh, of surface parking into this brand new mixed use development. The building is four stories of office space for ZGF. There's ground floor retail, and there is uh, 17 floors of apartments. 12 West is, is what we call a high performance building. Um, a green building is another term for it. 12 West is a very energy efficient building. Uh, in, in energy modeling, it's, it's, it hasn't been open long enough for us to have a, a good idea about how it's exactly performing. But in energy modeling, um, the, the building is predicted to use 45% less um, energy than a typical building would. The, the, the way that, that we've achieved that level of energy performance is, is through um, sort of innovative systems and use of the natural environment to a certain extent. Uh, all of the roofs on, on 12 West are used to collect rainwater. So, um, Obviously, it rains a fair amount in Portland. Uh, that water is collected and it's used for a couple, couple things. It's used to flush the toilets in the office space. It's also used to create the green roof. Green Science Oregon is brought to you by Portland State University. Solutions for a sustainable Oregon. Portland um, is, is known uh, across the U.S. and I think increasingly around the world as, as sort of a home for, for innovation in, in green design um, and increasingly in green technology. Um, green roofs are a great example of that. You've got these, these folks at PSU who are doing um, pioneering work, research in, in quantifying the performance of, of green roofs. Um, and, and then you have a pioneer like uh, Tom Lipton, who's um, with the city of Portland several years ago, got interested in green roofs, um, looked at his garage and thought, I'll put one on there and see what it does. And, um, you know, uh, using just pool liner and, and dirt from the yard, um, built uh, one of the first green roofs in Portland, uh, measured the performance, made the argument for it, and now um, the city of Portland has uh, incentive programs and there are green roofs all over the city of Portland. Our interest in eco-roofs and this technology started in uh oh, I guess somewhere around 1996. And we had been working on many water issues, stormwater issues, the combined sewer issues and, and things like that. And so trying to find ways to reduce the amount of rainfall that gets into the sewer system. And so ideas have, many ideas came up with regard to green vegetated approaches, trees intercept rainfall, and then there are many other things that we can do on the ground and then an idea came up well what about the rooftops and could we find a way to capture water on the roof and then uh, evaporate that water back into the sky. I'm a landscape architect I work for the Bureau of Environmental Services in our sustainable stormwater division and specifically I work on the eco roof program. We're standing on top of the Hamilton apartment building in southwest Portland. This is one of our uh, first projects. This was installed in 1996. And we set up monitoring equipment. We have a rain gauge and we have a flow meter. And so we, we see how much rain hits the roof, how much water goes off. And the difference between what lands on the roof and what goes down the drain is an amount of water that's about 55% of our rainfall. And that water is going back up into the sky because it's evapotranspirated up through the course of the day and the weeks and, and the months. So that's good news. That's, we get a lot of volume of the water that's retained and prevented from running off. And then just this whole thing is like a cushion. So when those really strong downpours occur, uh, this, this system, as you might call it, is able to attenuate that intense uh, rainfall and slow it down and pretty much just uh, make it act a little bit more like it would in nature hitting a forest and the forest floor. This concept, what it does is it allows us to get at the source of the problem, which rain is, shouldn't be a problem, but in an urban area, it, it causes problems. So this captures a lot of it before it becomes stormwater runoff. Portland's a great city for green roofs, right? Primarily, uh, green roofs serve lots of functions. I mean, one of the, the key roles in green roof is, is water abatement. So it's reducing stormwater runoff. You know, we get 36, 37 inches of rain a year in Portland. 
Uh, and so having ways to, to slow down uh, the water runoff is really important from a wastewater treatment perspective. On this project, these are pretty typical, um, it's pretty typical green earth installation for the Pacific Northwest. These are mainly, all of these trays are currently planted with about six to eight species of sedum. And sedum is this sort of small, really succulent kind of plant, which is exceptionally sort of drought tolerant. It's really hardy. So the idea is that you could establish a green roof with, with small, low-lying plants that could, could make it through the summer without any extra irrigation. It's a fairly diverse mix. You can see we've got a mix of all sorts of colors. We're doing some experiments trying to, to alter the albedo of the surface here. Um, one thing we have not planted yet in these trays is uh, essentially the other species, a mix of grasses and forbs and some broadleaf species uh, that will complement sort of the biodiversity of the sedum. So sedums traditionally are, are really the traditional plant choice for green roofs. But here at PSU, we actually think we can sort of push what green roofs do. And so we're gonna start diversifying the mixture of species that you might find. So species that are gonna move a little more water, uh, have more higher rates of evapotranspiration, could also have species that do a better job of fixing carbon from the atmosphere, perhaps even choosing species that uh, do a better job of cleaning the air. Older homes that have steeply pitched roofs, it would be a challenge to put uh, an eco-roof on one of those. It costs more money because you need more structure. You have to make sure that your building is strong enough to hold the extra weight. So it's really more something that you could look at with new construction or if you're doing a major remodel. That's where you're doing this construction. You can upgrade the structure and, uh, and then have this kind of uh, uh, roof on your building.